Um, first of all, I feel like there is this um, massive emotional stonewalling that's happening that's happening between you and another person where you can't really penetrate the communication barriers, okay? And um, I honestly don't feel like it's coming from you. I feel like it's coming from the partner. Um, I feel like you're dealing with someone who wants a lot of attention. And when you're dealing with someone who wants a lot of attention as a, you know, the, the, the sign that you are, you don't really feed into their ego. You try not to. And in a way, I feel like it can be a little bit of a turnoff for you when someone makes such heavy emotional demands on you. And then when someone always tries to, you know, kind of inject themselves in conversations or they keep um, redirecting conversations back at themselves. And so... I feel like this has happened in the past where communication has been really kind of strange and difficult um, between you and another person to the point where they might say something and you don't really know how to follow up. You don't really know how to respond. And so the two of you, if it's a crush, you're talking about everything but the emotions that are flowing between the two of you. And I also feel like this emotional barrier is really hindering true, effective, meaningful communication. So yes, there might be talks back and forth, but it really doesn't escalate to anything um, more stable. It doesn't escalate to, you know, um, being able to connect with someone on an emotional level, okay? And I do feel like it's coming from the other partner, the, the, the person or the partner that you're dealing with. Um, in a way, I feel like they're very, very attracted to you. Like they look at you, they like what they see, they have really strong um, sexual attraction, physical attraction. They, they really like the way that you look, the way that you carry yourself, the way you communicate. And the energy you bring to the table I have here is the chariot. This is someone who perseveres. This is someone who overcomes a lot of obstacles and challenges to get where they are today. So they see you as someone who's very deliberate with what you do. You don't give up easily. You charge forward and you overcome your internal conflicts and your own obstacles to kind of succeed in life. And they see you as someone who's very like, um, I, I want to say like single minded. When you set your mind and your uh, intentions to achieve something, you go for it and you don't really need other people's advice. You don't really need other people to um give you, you know, counsel or to assist you in any way. So in a way, very independent. And um, you're purposeful with your energy and with your vision and with, you know, the things that you're trying to achieve in life. So this is a great card overall that indicates a lot of discipline and a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. So in a way, they really admire that about you. And as a result of it, relationships and, you know, um, having a crush on somebody or, you know, you, you know how to separate your love life from your personal life or I'm sorry, your personal life from your professional life. And you don't mind getting your hands dirty when things need to be done, you move ahead. And so the relationship partner or the crush that you're dealing with, they embody the energy of the four of swords and the four of swords is lack of communication. And there is once again, this emotional barrier, this block of ice that's preventing you from having a true connection with the other person. And uh, if you look at the heart, everything is very hollowed out. So you're dealing with someone who has been dealt a great deal of emotional disappointments in their life. They are also very emotionally blocked and they don't really know how to express themselves in an emotional way. So I feel like the communication flows in a way where it's very superficial and it's very like scratching the surface scraping the surface of that iceberg and not seeing really anything underneath okay so you're dealing with someone who's not emotionally available um the four of swords usually indicates a person who's in a relationship and they're not leaving their relationship so if you're dealing with somebody like that the emotional blockages is um, coming from their end to prevent the emotions to prevent feeling, to prevent falling deeper in love with you. So that's what I feel is happening here. It's almost like they're purposely blocking out your efforts or they're purposely blocking things out so that they don't feel things because they're either in another relationship and they don't want to fall for you 
or because they themselves are just not emotionally available the way that you want. So you can push and push and push ahead, but you're going to hit this emotional uh, brick wall and just realize that it is coming, the other person is resurrecting this wall to protect themselves, okay? Um, I have here the Ten of Swords. And if you're dealing with an air sign in general, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, they're taking a little bit of a step back away from you. And I pulled out two cards to indicate, you know, um, to, to clarify the Ten of Swords. Where is it coming from? And I have here the King of Wands and the Star. And the King of Wands and the Star shows up in, another, in the other spread as well. So this is a pretty significant, significant person. So you might be dealing here with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, or a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, sun, moon, or rising. This is someone who's really, really attracted to you. They're looking at you. You embody the energy of the star. You make magic happen. You're somebody who's very creative, possibly in the creative arts, in dance, music. You're very, very well-rounded. And I feel like you have a lot of hobbies and things for your emotional outlets. And as a result of it, if you're sad, you know, you don't cling on to a relationship partner to fulfill you. You have other creative outlets to um, kind of like for your energy to dissipate. And so relationships might not be on the front and center. You know, it, it might not take precedence over your life. And so this star card indicates someone who's very inspiring to talk to, inspiring to be with, someone who is just um, very pure at heart and they care about people. And your partner, they're very, very attracted to the way that you are. But with the uh, King of Wands, he or she harbors a lot of um, lust and a lot of sexual, physical energy, stamina. And I feel like, you know, they, they admire you from afar, but they're not really approaching. And your, your back is kind of turned to them too. So they feel almost like they're being left out in the cold. And they feel almost like you're nurturing a relationship elsewhere, okay? And hence, they might feel... A little bit betrayed they might feel like you're not making the connection with them they might not feel like you're in contact with them and so they feel a little bit left out and I feel almost like it's a cyclical pattern where you approach them they block you and then you move away and then they try to make a comeback so it's it's a very like um, childish cat and mouse type of a situation and I feel like energetically, the two of you are not really aligning the right way in order for anything to get off the ground. So it's like when you're free, you want to communicate with them. They're busy. So they're not really um, giving you the, the, the attention. And then when you're busy, they're shooting you a lot of messages. So energetically and timing wise, you two are not really aligned with each other for this week. Okay. And I also feel like you're at a point where this is um, posting a lot of pictures. This is someone who's very photogenic and this is someone who's very attractive, very beautiful. And the body, the energy that you embody is you're going to have a lot of people paying attention to you. So people at work, people when you walk to the grocery store, people down the street, just a lot of people in your vicinity that are really, um, you know, magnetized towards you. And as a result of it, the crush, the relationship partner might feel a little bit left out. And then I also have this character here, the King of Pentacles. This is somebody who has been around your vicinity for quite some time. He or she is very reliable. So this is Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, very reliable. They take care of business. Whenever you need them, they're always around. So there's another character hovering around you. And I feel like it's creating some type of a jealousy some type of a um, disconnect with the person that you're interested in because this person is constantly around you. You might be making plans with this person. You might be going on lunch dates. You might be, you know, around them a lot, coming to them for advice. And so I feel almost like for those of you who like somebody and it's more of a professional setting, they are behaving as your mentor, as your, your, your guide, um, as your um, as the person, the go-to person to help you troubleshoot. 
And they see themselves as embody uh, embodying either that mentor role, that um, paternal maternal role, rather than being able to connect with you on that emotional level. So I definitely see an emotional disconnect. And I feel like you're very focused on what you need to do. And so you don't really let, you know, the relationship aspect um, deter you from where you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do as an individual in life, okay? Um, so somebody feels a little bit neglected here and there is envy, but they're kind of sulking in silence and they're not really, um, they're not really giving you, you know, they're, they're not really voicing their opinions and there's just this emotional stonewall that's um, kind of resurrected between you and them. In other areas of your life, I feel like you are catering to another person and when I say this I feel almost like you're deferring to somebody's judgment you're trying to do things in the correct way to please another person this can be bending over backwards for like a parent to make sure that they're okay um, they might be very uh, difficult to deal with they might be very picky they might be very like they might have really really high standards that are almost impossible for you to reach okay um, I also feel like there are delays here when it comes to work, when it comes to um, things that you are building up. There are delays here for a reason so that you can go back to the drawing board and perfect it. And once it's perfected, then it gets approved and then you will move on to the next level. So I feel it's like this, almost like if you have projects that you need to get off the ground and you have to have like multiple people to sign off on it, and the first person, they're like, oh, this is wrong, that is wrong. And so you um, go back to the drawing board and you fix that. And then the next person finds something else that's wrong. And so all of these delays can be very aggravating. But I feel like you're still learning. You're in the process of learning. You're in the process of training. And you're trying to do things the right way. So in the beginning, you might have done things your way. And you might have felt like, okay, this is sufficient. I think I know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to submit it. And then once you submit it, there are a, a host of other issues that you didn't anticipate. And so think of it as not delays, but more like opportunities for learning. Opportunities for you to kind of like look at the little details and figure out where everything fits so that you can have a bigger picture. And as a result of it, towards the end of the week, what we do have is completion. Things coming back around full circle. And, you know, you're going to be at a point where you know how everything works. You know how all the pieces fit together. You know how to explain yourself. And you know how to, if people ask you, you know, what are the processes to getting this done? You can sit there and recite verbatim, like just uh, off the top of your head these are the steps that I took the first time and this is what happened and then I went back to the drawing board and I redid it and then this is the outcome. So I feel like some amazing outcomes that are going to be coming into the picture for you. First of all, regarding finances, finances are looking really, really good and I feel like you've been very, very disciplined with, um, you know, not spending money, not wasting money, not spending it on frivolous things, saving up, um, planning things for a rainy day. I do see a lot of insights and ideas coming into the picture from uh, another person coming to you, like education or, you know, giving you um, expertise or giving you advice or giving you some type of an input to allow you to take have better control and to feel more confident about your financial future. And then I also feel like this energy about, you know, uh, wanting to please another person, but their back is turned to you. And so whatever you're doing, I feel like you're aware of it. And so you're focusing more on yourself. You're focusing more on healing um, and not letting their words or their actions undermine you, not letting the words or their action ruin your day. And I feel almost like somebody here feels really strongly for you, but they're not in a position where they can act on it. I'm I'm looking at this bald fist, okay? It's like, oh, I really want to act on it, but I can't. So you're dealing with somebody like this who has a lot of passion for you, who's very attracted to you, but I just feel like they're not in a position where they can act. 
So they have to transmute that energy and approach you in a different way. So rather than romantic, they might approach you kind of like in a very platonic way, even though everything might show on their body language, their gesture, their hands and their their face. But in terms of physically acting on it, they're not going to do that. And they're not going to communicate that either verbally, which is really frustrating because you feel what you feel, right? Like you, you know how they feel about you. Um, and it, 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 in a way, kind of casts doubts on your what you're picking up from them. So you feel like, okay, I, I know that they like me, but then in the physical world, they don't act like it. And so it can really mess you up. Um, it can really affect your self-esteem. It can really affect um, your perception of reality. And I feel like over time, it's hard for you to trust your intuition. And as a result of that, you're going to just let them be and, you know, focus on yourself, focus on building wealth, focus on the tangible, physical things that you have actual control over. There will be a lot of good news on the financial front, on the work front as well, coming in for this week. Um, I see like new opportunities to boost your income as well as to um, it's like training opportunities, opportunity to train other people as well, where you can be in the limelight and you can show off your skills and talents. OK, so great week overall in love is just I, I feel this icy um, emotional barrier between you and another person. And I'm hoping that, you know, the situation will um, move away like you will move away from it by next week. OK, so Aquarius, take care of yourself and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye bye.